In this video, you will learn how to install and connect the Current Sensing Unit CSU2. The TVOC2 ArcGuard system provides an unrivaled optical arc flash mitigation device with the fastest reaction time on the market. To avoid nuisance tripping of the TVOC2, the new current sensing unit CSU2 can be added if the switchgear is likely to be exposed to strong light. The CSU2 is an accessory to the TVOC2, which identifies the current increase associated with an arc flash and thereby adds current as a second condition to light. There are two versions of the CSU2. The CSU2 LV for low voltage switchgear and the CSU2 MV for medium voltage switchgear. Depending on the voltage and the switchgear design, the two versions use different types of Rogowski coil current sensors mounted either on a cable or on a bus bar. If the sensors detect overcurrent, the CSU2 instantly sends the information to the TVOC2 via fiber optic cables. The following presentation is performed by a professional following mandatory safety methods. Before mounting and connecting any components, make sure that the supply voltage is switched off. First, make sure that the supply voltage has been switched off to prevent any unexpected damages or injuries. The CSU2 can be installed directly on a wall. A layer with the exact dimensions is available in the installation manual. In this video, the CSU2 will be installed on a DIN rail. First, hook the CSU2 on the top rail. Then pull the barrier down, snap the CSU2 on the rail, and release the barrier to secure. Connect the CSU2 to the TVOC2 with a fiber optic cable supplied by ABB. Connect the cable to output 2 on the CSU2 and to input 21 on the lower right side of the TVOC2. When installing two CSU2s, connect the first one to input 21 and the second one to input 22 on the TVOC2. Depending on the number of CSU2s used, the dip switches need to be configured accordingly. If one CSU2 is used, dip switch 1 must be on and dip switch 2 off. When using two CSU2s, both dip switches 1 and 2 must be on. With the TVOC2, it is possible to connect one or more CSU2s in a daisy chain. The signal indicating overcurrent will go through all CSU2s downstream toward the main unit TVOC2. To perform this operation, connect the first CSU2 to the TVOC2 using output 2 on the CSU2 and input 21 on the TVOC2. Then on the second CSU2, connect the cable to output 2 and connect it to input 1 on the first CSU2. To activate the daisy chain mode, select Settings on the HMI. Then select Parameters and Daisy Chain. Select On to activate the configuration and press Validate. The overcurrent relay K1 is used to signal when overcurrent occurs. The relay can be used to activate an alarm or to pass the trip information to a supervised system. At the top of the CSU2, connect the overcurrent relay to the K1 OC section of the unit. Then, connect the cable using terminal numbers 14, 12, and 11. For this purpose, strip 7 millimeters of the wire. Mm -hmm. 
Modbus RTU is a two-wire RS-485-based field bus communication system. Both read and write via Modbus RTU are supported. To set up the Modbus RTU, connect positive terminal on RS-485 to B on the Modbus connector on the unit. Connect negative terminal on RS-485 to A on the Modbus connector. And connect ground terminal to signal common on the Modbus connector. There are two versions of the CSU-2. The CSU-2LV for low voltage applications and the CSU-2MV for medium voltage applications. Each version uses different adapted Rogowski coil current sensors. The LV version of the current sensor can be wrapped and adjusted around a bus bar or a cable. It does not need any ground connection. The MV version is compatible with several types of current sensors. They can be either open loop types or closed coils. All types are dedicated only for cable mount and require a ground connection. The list of compatible sensors for the CSU2 MV can be found in the catalog. To install the LV current sensor, turn the locking ring to open the coil. Place the coil around the cable or a bus bar and close it by locking the ring. To install the open loop MV current sensor, release the snap lock and open the coil. Place the coil around an MV cable and close it. Adjust it with the dedicated screws. If necessary, use tightening strips to ensure the coil stays in position. Connect the current sensor to ground. Once correctly attached, connect the RJ45 connector of the Rogowski coil current sensors to the L1, L2, L3, and N connectors, located at the top of the CSU2. If connected correctly, a green light will show. To connect the power supply to the unit, use the section at the top right side of the unit. Connect the cables to protective earth, NA1, L1A2 for power supply. Before switching the power supply on, check your installation and make sure the supply voltage is in accordance with the product marking labels. When switched on, a green LED indicator should illuminate and text should appear on the HMI screen. In this next step, we will present how to set up the system during the startup sequence. This phase occurs when first using the CSU2 or after a factory reset. To navigate the HMI, use the symbols to select categories in the main menu. In subcategories, use the up and down arrows and the select button to validate. The startup sequence will ask to set up the following, language, date, time, inputs, corresponding to the number of current sensors respectively connected to CSU2 inputs L1, L2, L3, and N, correction factors for each current sensor when using the MV version, overcurrent and warning threshold. Note that setting a current warning is optional and will not affect the functioning of the unit. The values on screen are set for the example and can be adjusted following your need. Once the basics are set up on the HMI, the Modbus settings should be taken care of. To access the Modbus settings via the HMI, select Settings, Modbus, and then press Validate. The Modbus menu will help you adjust the Modbus ID, baud rate, and frame format the default value should be replaced in accordance with your existing network. The correction factor of each current sensor is indicated on the sensor label. A copy is also present in the sensor wrapping. To adjust the correction factor, press Settings, then Parameters, and scroll down to Correction Factors using the down arrows on the right. 
From this menu, the correction factor can be defined for each current sensor. If the CSU2 detects a dysfunction or a poor connection, the LED on the current sensor inputs will turn red. On the HMI, the error code Current Sensor LX or N will appear, meaning that the signal is not coming correctly to the CSU2. A notification will also appear through Modbus RTU communication. In this case, try to disconnect and reconnect the current sensor identified by the error code. An internal error can be detected via the notifications window and a red LED on the CSU2. To find out more about error details, go to the Events section and click on Combined or Errors on the HMI. In this section, errors are listed by time. Refer to the section Error Events in the CSU2 manual to know more about the nature of the error. In this example, the CSU2 is showing the error code I1NL. This code corresponds to a no light situation. In this case, make sure that light is transmitted by units connected to the optical input connector and that the optical cable is not damaged. While an internal error is active, the CSU2 turns the light signal to the TVOC2 main unit off to enable safe tripping during the time of error.